Hello everybody. I'll be taking you through the production of a Ken Burns effect using After Effects. And I'll be looking at some overarching concepts with the program just to get you introduced to it. Uh, this is a very straightforward project and shouldn't take you a whole lot of time. Um, so let me get into it. First of all, I need to get myself prepared. And the best thing you can do is always refer to the instructions that's coming down from your manager and imagining that I am your manager in this case uh, I just want you to follow these instructions very carefully I ask you to visit google.com or pexels.com find four images that excite you and this is going to be a short video that goes up onto your YouTube channel and represents you uh, as a default video that people see when they first land on your page so personally, I've gone over to Pexels to get some really nice high resolution photos and I've chosen the category nature. Um, one thing I want to point out that's very important is that when you're selecting your pictures that you make sure that they're wider than 200 or 2400 pixels and uh, taller than 1400. And that's because we're going to be moving them from left to right and up to down and that needs to be outside of the uh, composition space at 1920 by 1080. So we need a little bit of room for these uh, to breathe and move around. So, um, for example, if I look at this photo here and I choose the option for a free download, I can see 1920 by 19 might not be big enough for me. Um, 1080, however, is the minimum for the height. So this might work. Uh, we'll see uh, in, a, in a minute here in the demonstration. Uh, this is another one that I chose. And I can see that the original is way bigger than 1920 by 1080. So I have a lot of room for this one to breathe. I can rescale it down. And once, to, uh, once again, just to remind you, you never want to scale an image bigger um, than 100% because you're going to end up starting to see pixels and blurring as the software starts to interpolate the picture. So I've prepared a directory here of several photos. And I've started to rename them. I've left the last one uh, in the default name that came down from pixels. Uh, just to show you how I like to keep myself organized. I know that this is a photo of fall leaves, so I'm just going to call it underscore uh, four underscore fall leaves. And then when I bring these into uh, After Effects, I'm going to be uh, nice and organized. And I'll be able to see them very easily when they're out on the timeline. So that's important. Um, I'm going to hop into After Effects here. And for many of you, you're going to be seeing this for the first time. For some of you, this might be, um, might be something you've seen in the past. So I'm going to be uh, going pretty quick here. Um, so I hope that uh, you're able to keep up. So first and foremost, I'm going to start a new project. And I'm going to save this right away um, just to make sure that all of my uh, project files are saved appropriately and that they are in the right place. Now I am on a Mac, so I do want to make sure that I'm in the right place. So choose the right folder. I'm going to hop into exercise one where I have all of my photos and I'm just going to save this in as uh, exercise, exercise one dot after effects project dot AEP. And save that there. Now, by default, every image that I bring in is going to be exposed on the timeline um, only a second in length. So one thing I like to do is consider how long I want to show these photos uh, in my compositions. And jump up into the preferences. Um, so I'm going to just take a look here under After Effects and Preferences and 
choose import and you'll notice that still footage by default is set to the length of the composition um, so when I drag it down onto the timeline it's going to make it the full duration but I want these to be exposed for only 10 seconds in length so I can make sure that that's indeed the case um, by changing this from you know one second to uh, 10 seconds and just to remind you that these two integer values here they represent frames so when I bring my still images into the program uh, they will be exposed on the composition for 10 seconds in length and that's going to be an overarching change that I make to the software so every picture uh, that is still uh, will have that property and then I'm just going to quickly grab my four pictures and just drag them into the project field here on the left hand side. And you'll notice it takes a second for the software to import it. And we're ready to get started creating a composition. Now if you think back to Premiere, um, timelines were referred to as sequences. Um, After Effects uses the language composition. So I'm going to click that and ah, I can see I've got a place here to give my composition a name. As per my instructions, I'm going to call this the master composition. Um, keep it at 1920 by 1080. Uh, the pixels need to be square. The frame rate is going to be 30. By default, I believe the frame rate is 25 when you first run the software. I'm going to change that to 30. Keep my resolution full and change my duration um, to the full length of what I need, which is 40 seconds in this case. There's also an option here to change the background color. Uh, so if you want something else um, for your text to lay up on, um, when there is no image, you could change the background. But I'm going to keep mine black. OK. Then I'm going to grab my first image and focus on that. I'm going to drag it down onto my timeline. And you'll notice right away that it it's zoomed in really, really, really far. And if I look carefully down here, I have a control that allows me to zoom in and out of my composition. So if I zoom really far out to say 25%, um, I can see a few important things here. Uh, first and foremost, my image called sphere number one um, when I highlight it, the edges are way out outside of my composition frame. So that tells me that I could click and drag and move that image around in that window and I can animate it um, to expose more and more of that image, which is wonderful. So looking back at my specifications on Blackboard, I'm going to make all four of my images move right to left, bottom up, left to right, and top to bottom. And I'm going to do that in this order so that I'll avoid something referred to as opposing moves. So I don't want it to go up to the bottom and then bottom to up right away. I want to make it a little bit more visually interesting and try to avoid moving um, my objects in an opposing manner uh, by following this list very carefully. So right to left is going to be my first challenge. And similar to Premiere, uh, all of our properties for animation are accessible on the layer itself. So if I drop this down, like so, using the little chevron, uh, I can see that there is uh, there's a set of options in here, a set of controls for me to manipulate um, the transform, the position, the scale, rotation, and opacity. And similar to Premiere, we have these little stopwatches where we can indicate uh, to the software what it is we want to animate. Now it's really important when you're getting started is to scale your image down um, first so that you make a decision 
as to what it is you want to show uh, to the viewer. So I just clicked on the value here and dragged it left to right um, to scale the image in a proportionate manner. And that is kept constrained by this little uh, option here, uh, this one control where we can constrain proportions. And by the looks of it, roughly 43% is going to be uh, good enough. And that means that I can move this from left to right uh, as a slow crawl over the course of 10 seconds to create this uh, Ken Burns effect. I want to look back to my specifications. The first thing that my manager is asking me to do is to move this from the right uh, to the left. So I'm going to position this uh, on the right hand side and think is it is that going to be right to left? No, that's going to be left to right. So I want to start this with the left edge of my image uh, close to the edge of my composition. Now I can zoom up a little bit here. I'm going to change this from 25% to 50% to see a little bit more of my composition. And now I'm going to start the process of doing the animation. And that's very straightforward. All I need to do is inform After Effects that I'm going to be animating the property position uh, by turning on the stopwatch here. But I have to be mindful as to where my playhead is. And my playhead is this blue bar here. And by default, it is sitting at frame zero or the first frame of my animation. And when I click that stopwatch, I can see that After Effects has created a keyframe here, which is recording these two integer values at that moment in time so that it can remember where that object needs to be at that time. Very simply, I just drag my timeline down to the end until it blinks to black and bring it back maybe one frame. And then use these controls here to add or remove keyframes. So I'm going to add another one of these little blue diamonds, one of these keyframes at the end of the image's exposure. And then simply dragging this value to the left, I can move my image to another position. It is recorded in that keyframe. So now when I jump back, and I always want you to keep in mind that these are super powerful controls to move you between your keyframes. So I can jump forward in time, I can move back in time and land my playhead directly on top of the keyframes. So I rewind to frame zero. I'm going to press the space bar. Et voila! We have produced our first Ken Burns effect, a slow crawl of an image. And it is moving from right to left. So that is awesome. So I'm going to hide all of these properties by simply clicking on the down arrow. And I'm going to hide this layer, and I'm going to lock it. By locking it, I'm no longer going to be able to change uh, anything by accident, move it around. And by clicking the little eyeball, uh, I've hidden that layer. So I can turn it on, I can turn it off. Now this was the image earlier that I thought was going to be a little problematic because it didn't have quite the resolution that I thought I would need. But if I look back to my specifications, this one goes from the bottom up. All right, so it does fit the width of my composition. So chances are I can make this, yes, I can make this move from the bottom like so up. Uh, into the frame. 
So that shouldn't be an issue. So I'm going to jump in and do this very quickly. I'm going to jump back to frame one. I'm going to turn on position. I'm going to drag it to where I want it. And this time I'm holding the shift key while I drag it so that I can make sure that that image moves directly down on the Y axis and won't accidentally move left to right if I'm holding down the shift key. I could also quickly change the integer value here, or I could just drag it like so to position it into place. So I want this to be at the bottom and then close to the end of my animation. I want it to be up at the top. But I want to point out that I've already got a keyframe here on my previous layer. And even though this is locked, I can still use these controls over here to jump to the next keyframe. By doing that, I've moved the keyframe exactly where I need it to be to generate the next keyframe for the layer below. Very handy. And then I can either hold down shift and just drag this image up like so, rewind, press the play bar, the space bar to play and watch the effect happen. Awesome. Very cool. Now, obviously we're going to want this to be um, happening one image after the next. Um, but what I'm doing by working with all of my layers stacked on top of each other is working in a very economic fashion so that later I can just grab these layers and drag them out over time. And don't forget, I set my composition to be 40 seconds in duration. So this should be just fine uh, in terms of the duration that I have set up when I start to stretch these out. So I'm just gonna work one, on, one by one with all of these images stacked on top of one another. I'm gonna grab the bridge and drop it down. And once again, this is an image that's really, really big. So I'm gonna zoom out to 25% to see the edges. I'm gonna lock down layer two. I'm gonna drop this transform down and I'm going to scale my image so I can see a whole lot more of it. And I'll look back to my specifications and I know that my third one has to go from the left to right. So I'm going to position this on the left side of my frame like so. And it's okay that I'm moving that at the frame where I was uh, currently at because I haven't set my, I haven't set the property of position to animate yet. So I want to make sure that it's in position and then place my playhead, click the stopwatch to tell the software that we're going to be animating that specific property. And at frame one, it will create a keyframe. And then I can jump down in time by using the previous keyframe above. record that keyframe and then this time I'm just going to use the integer by clicking and dragging on it to move it into place. Looks good. Jump back to 50%. Rewind. See if I indeed like what I'm seeing. Works beautifully. I'm going to lock it. I'm going to hide it and grab number four so we can finish this off. I'm going to drop the transform down. I'm going to scale this by dragging the integer value left and right. And I have to keep in mind, manager's got a spec. This one's going to go from top to bottom. So I'm going to position this where I like it. So I'm going to see imagery from the bottom of the picture first. I'm going to rewind back to frame zero, frame number one. 
turn on animation for the property position, creates a keyframe, drop down the previous layer, jump to the last keyframe, record a keyframe by pressing that icon there. One popped up here, and then I can hold shift and click and drag it down into position. And that should look awesome. Okay, next step. Grab each of the layers, and you can do so by clicking on, say, level layer two. Oh, it's, it's saying it's flashing at me. I wonder why. Chances are it's because I have my layers locked and I can't see them. So let me turn the visibility on for the layers, unlock them all. And now I can click on the layers that I want to move out in time. And all I'm doing is clicking once, holding down shift, and then clicking multiple layers. And then I can just drag them to create what looks to be a staircase, like so. And I am leaving just a little bit of overlap just to be safe. Um, and as you get more proficient with After Effects, you'll find out that there are shortcuts to actually snap these into place. Uh, but we won't worry about that right now. So I'm going to press play. I can see my playhead is moving along. That's the red bar there. It's going to switch over to the next image. I don't have any opposing moves. One move from right to left. The other one's moving from bottom up. I'm moving from left to right. And then the last layer should be moving top down. That looks awesome. Cool. The next thing I want to do is set up some text. And to do that, I need to use the type tool. So, so far I want to point out there is a whole shelf of tools up here. Um, and we've been only working with the selection tool which allows us to move and scale uh, different layers. But I'm gonna jump over to this tool here, the horizontal type tool. And the minute I click on that control, if you pay attention to the right-hand side, you'll see that the software has jumped into um, uh, character edit mode. So I can choose, for example, uh, a different font. So I'm going to just switch over to Helvetica Bold. I'm going to make my font a lot bigger because I know from experience that 36 is going to appear very small. Um, and I know here that I have two color controls. One for the fill color of the type. And then this one down here, which I can click on to bring forward, uh, which is the outline of, of the text. So I'm going to make my text black. And then I'm going to make my outline white. I'm going to keep this really simple. And one thing I want to point out, if you notice where my playhead is right now, sort of willy-nilly sitting out here around 32 seconds, the moment I click to create text, um, I can't see it if I type. I'm just going to type my name, uh, Kevin. I can't see it. And that's because the new type layer was generated at frame zero over here. And it positioned it on top of the previous layer that I had selected. So you got to be really careful. I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to rewind my playhead back to zero. And I'm going to select 
sphere.jpg frame or layer one. And I'm just going to click uh, to generate a type layer. And I'm going to put in digital media. And then on another layer for animation, I'm going to write the word designer. What the heck? Now, I can grab this region of time and I can drag it to wherever I need it. So I'm going to, I'm going to expose this near the end of my, of my video. And I'm just going to drag this over and then digital media is going to pop up on top of on top of these red leaves. Now this might be a time where I want to start finessing the design. So I'm going to drag the timeline down and I'm going to choose the option from the magnification uh, pull down. I'm going to make this composition fit so I can see a whole lot better what's going on. Now I don't have any animation set up for the type yet. When I drop down transform, I don't have any of these stopwatches on. So I have free reign right now to switch back. And this is something to be mindful of. I need to switch back to the selection tool so that I can grab the text object and move it where I want it. Um, so I'm just going to lay it up maybe under that branch there and scale it a little bit larger. That looks good. Now I'm having a difficult time with contrast because I can't really see um, that white outline very well. So in the character options, there is a place here to change the width of the stroke. And as you do that, you'll notice that it starts to take over the text. Uh, but there's a wonderful option um, to change it from stroke being on top of the fill, from the fill, which is black, to be on top of the white. And you have a lot more control over how readable that is. So that looks really, really solid now. If I had more time, I'd really focus on what kind of font I'd like to use to make it a lot more uh, personal. Uh, but that looks pretty good to me now. I like it. Um, so quickly, I'm just going to jump back to the beginning of the image being exposed. And I'm going to turn on animation for the position of that type um, by clicking on the stopwatch for the text layer. I'm going to double check to make sure a keyframe has popped up. It has. And then I'm going to position it. I'm not going to move the timeline. I'm going to position it off screen. So I'm just going to make it fly off screen. And I got to click and drag a couple times uh, to get it off to the left hand side. And then just a few seconds later, a few frames later, I'm going to create a new keyframe. And then I'm going to make it fly out. And I'm just clicking and dragging on that integer value so that it can fly in pretty fast. Awesome. I like it. OK, so now I'm going to add the next type object here. And I want it to say designer, but I have to be mindful that when I click and start typing uh, using the type tool, um, it's not going to position it where my playhead is. Um, so if I type in the word designer, um, I can't see it. I'm going to scrub the timeline back and oh, it's, it's there at the beginning. So I'm going to drag this over into the right position. Okay, nice. And this one I'm going to treat a little bit differently. I'm actually going to just use the selection tool and click and drag right on um, the composition. 
Whoa. Control Z to undo that. And I'm looking for the handles because they're hard to see red on orange. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to hold the shift key and that's actually going to help uh, to maintain uh, the width and the height. And click and drag um, the control over here in the character panel and uh, voila. I'm going to get that to sit nicely uh, right underneath the word media. Now the stroke values don't match because I scaled it down. <clears throat> so maybe I'll just take a second to get those to look similar. Yeah, and with my selection tool, keep that in mind. I need that in order to move things around. I'm going to grab the word designer and just position it exactly where I want it. Awesome. So the words digital media fly out and then designer. I'm going to have that fly up from below right after. So this might be a moment where I scale up my timeline again. And this time I'm going to drop down both of my layers. You can see how this can get complicated really quickly. So when you're first looking at your, your, your two layers, you've only got these two options, but if you pop down the transform, whew, there's a lot more going on. Um, and this can get, this can get busy very, very fast. Um, but that's fine with practice. Uh, you will get, you will get good at it. Um, so I know that at that moment in time, the word flies out. And then right after that, I would like for the word designer to fly up from the bottom. So I've got that layer highlighted. Gotta be really careful. I'm going to turn on position. and I'm going to drag it down on the Y axis to get it off screen. I'm going to move forward in time just a little bit, and then I'm going to bring it back up to where I know it looks really, really good. Right about there. And if I look carefully at the keyframes, um, these, these two down here, which deal with the words on top, they happen before uh, these keyframes here. And just to be mindful that you can grab these and drag them around, you can stretch them apart to retime them. So let's rewind and see how that looks. Digital Media Designer. Cool. Now, just for fun, and for those of you that want to take this maybe a step farther, I'm going to apply to both of my text layers near the end of their exposure. So they've been on screen now for quite some time. I am going to set up the opacity. And by default, they're set to 100%. And I'm going to make this fade out over a few frames. So both of these now will get dropped down to zero. Both of those type layers. And I don't actually have to create a keyframe. If I just start to manipulate the value, it will generate the keyframe for me. So I'm going to fade it down to zero. So now I have this really beautiful effect where the type dissolves out. That final image as well could use that treatment. That would be really nice. So I can hop back 
to the keyframes that I just generated for the type layers on opacity using these controls here, jumping back and forth, and I can fade my image out at the exact same time. I'm going to turn opacity on at the moment that I have 100% opacity for my text by turning on the stopwatch. And I'm going to use the control above for my type, jump to the end, and I'm going to drop this down to 0%. Now everything will fade to black. Cool. Now if I wanted to, maybe I want the text to fade before the image does. I can grab keyframes. I'm clicking and dragging a box. And I'm going to hold shift and click and drag a box on keyframes from a whole other layer. And I can make that happen earlier. So the text will fade out well before the image fades out. by simply dragging those back in time. Press play, and see how that looks. Very nice. One thing I should have been doing the entire time, save, 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 but I've already saved the file in the right place. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can see now, without a lot of effort, we now have a whole spaghetti mess of different properties that we can manipulate. So from time to time, I like to just go back to my layers and collapse all of these different properties and organize myself like so. Yeah. File save, we're good. Now we need to get this out of After Effects so that we can upload it to YouTube. And I will do that here quickly with you. Um, export, we want to add this to the Adobe Media Encoder queue. And hopefully I can do that uh, here with you because I was having some issues the other day um, getting this to run um, because of licensing problems working at home uh, with college software. So this is a another software tool in the Creative Cloud that can be used by you know, Premiere. It can be used by uh, After Effects to do a job of transcoding a lot of different videos. And it does uh, take a little bit of work um, for your machine to open it up. But you can see here um, that a new program uh, is is available to us and I can see here let me get rid of let me get rid of these I'm a little confused why there's two I will remove the selected remove that one as well go back to After Effects I'm going to export it using Media Encoder Q and it takes a second for the dynamic link library to get these two to talk to one another. Um, but now that I'm in this tool, I have a preset um, that looks familiar. Uh, YouTube 1080p full HD. So I can make that choice. And I need to let the software know where it's going to output it to. I'm going to pop that open and tell it just to put it inside of my exercise one folder. Hit save. Now it knows where to go. And then I start the queue by pressing the green play button. And that's it. That's as difficult as it is to export really beautiful, high quality stuff out of After Effects. As soon as this is done, I'm going to upload it to YouTube. 
and send you guys a link so that uh, you can get working on your project on your own. Now there's a whole lot more that we can do to make this interesting um, and we're going to investigate things like motion blur, um, easing uh, in upcoming classes. But I just wanted today's exercise to be really straightforward and give you something to uh, familiar, familiarize yourselves with with After Effects. Make sure it's saved. I quit After Effects here. Take a look in that folder and here's my final output. These are beautiful photos and uh, if you have some photos that you are absolutely proud of that you want to put up onto your own um, onto your YouTube page using this Ken Burns style feel free to okay that's everything I'm gonna stop the recording here I hope you all have fun and I will see you